and realized I was working 60 hours a week for the last 30 years, but living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, 30 years of my life was, was basically gone. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're gonna meet Murph in a really beautiful little uh, schoolie. And welcome to the channel, Murph. Thank you, thanks for having me. And how uh, you're full-time on the road now? I am, for about almost two years now. And so, uh, you know, I'm always interested to know what was the catalyst? What was the thing that said, I'm gonna go travel in a school bus on the road? You know, it's kind of a, a, a big long story and it's a lot of things that came together. But the, you know, the, the short version is, I spent 30 years running restaurants, coffee shops, things like that, managing them all over the country. Um, ended up being, you know, wildly successful in my field and realized that I was 50 years old. I was working 60 hours a week for the last 30 years and I really had very little to show for it. Right. Um, you know, with the, the way things are going now in the country, uh, rent kept going up and, and suddenly I realized I was making six figures but living paycheck to paycheck. Right. And, you know, 30 years of my life was, was basically gone making a lot of money for other people. So I started, you know, having the daydream or the fantasy of living this lifestyle. Uh, came across uh, you, Cheap R RV Living, started, you know, watching all the videos and becoming, you know, really excited about the idea, but I didn't have the guts to do it, um, to make that step and, you know, just step off the ledge. Um, and then uh, because of COVID, my business decided to close my location. So we didn't have drive-through capability. It was a large coffee shop chain. Um, they made the decision to close my location and I saw it as kind of a push. Like here's an opportunity where I'm closing up this store and I don't have anything to really go to responsibility wise. Why don't I give this a try? And it was really the push to get me to go and get on the road. My big thing is I love the outdoors. So, you know, I'm happy with trees or cactus or whatever, birds. I, I'm not really into, um, the city life, you know, and, and being around a lot of people all the time. And so when I had opportunities, I could go camping for a day or two. Um, this was an opportunity to go camping and never come home. So I'm just, I'm camping full time and, and yet I'm spending no money. It's finally the first thing that's so much fun and so fulfilling that doesn't require me putting money in every single day to pay other people. It's, it's free. And one of the most remarkable things is I've made more friends in the last two years yes. than I made in 30 years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and maybe it's because it's my tribe. Yeah. You know, maybe it's just because of the way nomads live. Um, but when it's not about possessions or your belongings, you know, you feel free to share and, you know, live more in a community, I'd say. But it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And so tell us just a little bit about your bus. Okay. It's a 2000 um, Chevy short bus. It's got a 6.5 liter diesel, uh, turbo diesel engine. Um, it does really well. Uh, my mileage is just unreal. I'm getting uh, almost 12 miles per gallon. Wow, that is amazing. For, for a big bus, it you sure know. Is. And it's not a huge bus, it's 23 feet, which is great because I can park all over. Mm -hmm. I can fit in a Walmart spot. And right. I mean, I don't camp at Walmarts or things. I, I always just make it to the mountains. It's never far to the mountains, but but when you go to town for supplies, it's great to fit, Yes. you know, and it opens up so many other, other places for me to stay. Um, it has low mileage. I picked it up at about 93,000 miles. Um, it had been started being built by um, a river rafting guide up in Jackson Hole, where I worked up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. But I didn't have the time that a lot of bus people have to spend six months to a year building my bus. So I just kind of had to get it and within a month hit the road. It was mm -hmm. just grab and go. Well, would it be okay if we take a quick look at your bus? I would love that. I would love to show you the inside. All right, let's check it out, folks. All right. You know, the first impression I get here is lots of whimsy. Right. And I'm assuming <laughs> that's obviously intentional. It is, it is. And actually the, the paint job here on the front was I met a guy who lived in a big Greyhound bus last year, an artist who was down in the Tonopah area about to do a, a big exhibit in Phoenix. And he painted a couple buses. We started talking and next thing you know, 
he painted the front of my bus. His name's Malcolm McRae. And it was just really fun to have him do it in the desert, just kind of live paint it. It was fun. This is the inside. Um, I don't know where to start except maybe the bathroom. It's right here. So the bathroom, I was trying to figure out how do you fit a cat tree inside of a bus. Oh, there you go. Well, I just figured I'd put it in the bathroom since he doesn't let me go to the bathroom alone anyway. That's the two together. Right, so there's his toilet right here, and then this is a uh, nature's head composting toilet mm -hmm. right next to that. Um, over here, I have a very small seating area. And for your friends. Uh, right, this is uh, Eustace, who joined us on Halloween. But this is uh, one of the original bus seats from the bus. Uh -huh. And it was uh, actually a church bus in Ohio. So that's one of the original buses. I have a queen-size bed back here, which is really big. Mm -hmm. But with a dog the size of mine, about 120 pounds, he yes. takes up a lot of space. I do have a TV set up, um, and I keep it covered because I don't like having a big black mirror. But um, I have a pull-out refrigerator down here right. for my food. Tons of storage down there. Yep, I've got a lot of storage space under that big bed area. Yeah. Um, this is where I keep most of my food, my pantry. I actually have a terrarium up here. So I have a little rainforest environment that comes with me to the desert. Kind of, it reminds me of home. And then I've got a full size um, Look at that. stove. I have an oven, right out of an RV. which is great. Yep. Yeah. So, and it's all propane. Um, I also have a propane heater redundantly in the closet up here, but I primarily use a diesel heater mm -hmm. because I mean, for $150, it was just unreal. And the dry heat, it's amazing. It so. Is. I am a big fan. The safety, uh, yeah. And for 150 bucks, they're surprisingly good. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with mine and I've really enjoyed it. And if it goes bad, you know, you're not right. having a whole lot. Exactly. And then I don't have like um, tanks or pumps or things like that. I'm really off grid set up. So like my sink here, it's just gravity fed. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. this here, yeah. but it's just gravity fed water tank. Sure. So it goes down and then I have a catch bucket down there. So I don't have tanks to dump or anything like that. Right. Um, I do have solar, uh, about 550 watts of solar, well, that's plenty. Um, that's which, which keeps me going. I also have a generator in the back for when it doesn't keep me going because that's happened quite a bit. You get those few days of cloudy weather you and suddenly you have no power. I have one lithium battery. It's a 200. So it's the size of two, but that's, you know, it's great to have lithium, but at you know, 700 to a thousand dollars a pop. Yeah. I just really can't afford to have more batteries. So. Right. so yeah, obviously I like really colorful things and you know, I've got a lot of art friends and my daughter's an artist. So a lot of different stuff I've picked up over the years. I think that was the hardest part when I went to this life um, to get rid of was art, was photos and large pieces of art that yeah. you, they just don't, they're not conducive to living in a small space. Mm -hmm. So everything else was pretty easy to get rid of, but but that was tough. So I just try to cram as much as I can in a small space and enjoy right. it. So yeah, but that's that's all 93 square feet of it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> Ryan, did you do the build? Um, halfway built when I got it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this framing was done by the original owner who started to build it. And then I, I bought it, did a lot of changes, pulled some stuff out. Yeah, a lot of the framing was already done, which um, considering the price of wood is pretty fantastic because uh, yeah. there's a lot of wood in here. I didn't turn the lights on when I came in, but you know, it, it does make a good difference. I've got good recessed lighting in here. This is Big Sexy. He came along with me a little while ago after we were up in Wyoming and Colorado when we had mice. Oh yeah. And um, decided that between mouse traps and poisons and all these things, the, the easiest thing was to get a cat. So- You probably haven't had mice since. I have not had any mice at all or flies or bugs or anything, he takes care of them all. And you got a nice uh, cabinet up here, closet? Yeah, well, this one's just my water storage, but uh, oh, this up here is my closet space. And it's like the one thing I haven't really gotten figured out yet, but I've got a um, oh yeah, Mr. Buddy heater in there that's hooked directly to my propane lines. It is a space for clothing, other things, but it kind of ends up being dog food and my catch-all. Catch it's like my stand-up junk drawer for the bus. And then on the outside, um, one of the things that I really liked is uh, being able to get up on the roof. Mm -hmm. It's been really neat, like when we were up in Yellowstone, um, my daughter and I were up on top of the roof 
and we got surrounded by 200 head of buffalo. So we couldn't get off the roof. We were surrounded by this herd of buffalo. And then a ranger came up and he looked up and he said, well, I guess you're okay up there. Just don't come down until they leave. And we said, okay, well, before you know it, all the tourists were taking pictures of us on the bus instead of the buffalo because it was so neat to be that immersed in nature. But yeah, I love it up there. I've got 300 watts of solar. And then on the other side, I put a big 250 watt panel. Right. Um, and the reason why I think that is so great is when you're down here in the desert in the winter, well, the sun doesn't go overhead. So my top panels don't get much, but as long as that panel is south facing, that sun just cruises along the horizon all day. Right. And it becomes my primary panel all winter. Whereas in the summer, my top panels get the most of it. So right. it's, been, yeah. it's been really neat. That's a very, very good idea. My propane tanks for my oven. Um, and then I have, you know, obviously backup gas generator right here. And then this is my tank for my diesel heater. Mm -hmm. And this is a ladder to get up, up top. It is. It's a little tricky, but it works. And then here's the panel. And so it, it yes. doesn't tilt at all. It, just it does. I actually hinged it on top so that I can tilt it upwards in the summer. I've got it mounted down hard right now because right. I don't want to do that in the winter. But in the summer, I can take off those bottom mounts and I can tilt it up. It's interesting. I do so much better in the winter because it's Arizona, you know? Yeah. And I'm in Wyoming, Montana primarily. That's my stomping ground. So Lots of, those pretty uh, places have a lot of trees and I lose my solar. Online, everyone told me I shouldn't. <laughs> There's all the naysayers and right. people that, you know, follow this lifestyle or, or different things. And they say, oh, well, you're not ready. You know, you're not a diesel mechanic. Don't buy a diesel bus. You know, you don't know how to do this or that, so you shouldn't be out there. And I went anyway, and I've had a wonderful time. And I've learned so much on the road while I'm in the process. So it's about that fear, that push I needed to go. And that's kind of why I named the bus Courage the Cowardly Bus, because I was so scared to do this. And it was getting that courage up to go out and do it. And it's just been a wonderful life so far. So it was just going to be a trial for, for a short term? Yeah, I'd, I had quite a bit of savings put together for, you know, because I never got vacations because I worked so much. So I decided, you know, I'm going to take a year and kind of do a sabbatical and just go live this lifestyle, um, enjoy it, and then I'll just come back to work. Um, but the year passed and I had absolutely zero interest in returning to 60 hours a week, living paycheck to paycheck. Um, when I could be living this lifestyle and watching every sunset and sunrise and just, you know, living the dream. So I'm, I'm staying. Do you mind if I ask what your basic monthly income is? It actually varies right now. Um, I've been running off of savings for so long and now they've been depleted. Um, this was kind of going to be like a, a trial thing for a year was going to go hit the road and then go back to, you know, the real world. And then I found out the real world was out here. So I have no plans on returning. So I actually, majority of my income right now comes in through my photography. I do wildlife photography. But I'm trying to manage to live on around a thousand a month. And I'm almost getting there with my photography. So. Oh wow, that's amazing. So, so I'm you know, trying to do some other things. Um, I did just pick up a uh, summer camp hosting gig. Oh great. So, and as a result of you and your recommendation, so I went, on the opening day of the Big Ten show. Mm -hmm. And I picked up a gig up at high elevation in Colorado. So I'm just tickled about that. Yeah. So that should supplement things and just keep me going. Well, Murph, thanks so much for uh, sharing your home with us. It, uh, I love it. I just love all the, all the whimsy and uh, it's alive. I mean, this is a, a virtually a living organism. Right. Kind of an expression of your soul. Well, I'm out here to have fun and and see beautiful things. And so they're inside the bus and outside the bus and all around us. So this is a, a wonderful place to be. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Folks, I know you've been inspired. You've seen uh, some great ways to live and heard some inspiring thoughts. So I hope you've been inspired enough to like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.